Hmm? All hmm? right. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, and always take care. Like a bit of qigong. What do you do always like? Well, we do. We sit. We do meditation. We do breathing. And do you really like? Do you press it like down the air? Like I do a little bit because like it gives the feeling of abdominal breathing that they're yeah. emptying their lungs and then their stomach and then you fill in from below. You know what I mean? If you follow the hands like that, I like that. All right, yo guys. Um, Greets from Honduras, Tegucigalpa. The guy who is sitting right now next to me is the one and only Lawrence Huff, yoga guy, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty interesting person. 73 years old, looks like 55. <laughs> um, and yeah, like really, really interesting story um, to tell. And I'm really, really curious about it. So, how are you? Very good, thank you. Glad to be here <laughs> on the big screen. <laughs> Appreciate that you have time. Man, um, we've been talking a little bit about it, what you actually do. and Maybe we just dig into it. You do yoga sessions, mindful sessions, mindfulness sessions, Yeah, right? I do uh, stretching and breathing. You can call it yoga, but it's mixed in with calisthenics, qigong, uh, uh, slow kung fu, things like that. Uh, is one one part of the uh, sessions that I give, and the other part is meditation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been giving them now for uh, for a couple of years here in Central America to different kinds of uh, youth groups, uh, at risk uh, people, kids, you know, schools, shelters for trafficked girls and abused women, many places like that. And uh, most recently, I've been in Honduras, here where we are right now doing uh, classes with in the prison system yeah but uh, but how come like have you because okay maybe for everybody who's listening and watching you're from the united states grew up in california right right and then you moved to florida right how come that you do things like these like have you ever like have you always been doing things like yes these? i have you did in my spare time i'm retired from education but that's what i've been doing and uh, I've been giving classes for free in public institutions as well as prisons, jails, and juvenile justice back there too. Yeah. So I came to a point where I, I have some connection to Central America through my family, my friends, and everything. And So I said, I think I'll go down there and introduce this to the prison system down there. <laughs> Pretty spontaneous, like. <laughs> that was my illusion. Uh -huh. Yeah. And how is this illusion? Well, now? it didn't happen right away. Most people didn't want anything to do with the prisons because these countries here are plagued with vicious gangs yeah. and they don't want any connection with themselves in these places. So this was the first impression. I immediately changed to doing trauma-informed uh, uh, social service sessions rather than just prison uh, sessions. And it wasn't until I'd been down here for some time and in Honduras specifically, that I was be able to begin doing classes in prisons also. Um, how was your first impression? And so you came into the prison and you just realized that as soon as somebody goes into prison, he's not worth it. What? This or is the general thing throughout the whole world. Yeah. It's thought that these people just forget about them and they feel forgotten about. They feel very abandoned very often, yeah. especially when they don't have much family connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a place like Honduras, where well, they send them far away so their family can't visit very easily. It's a terrible thing. And uh, that's one of the reasons I decided to do this work. Yeah. But uh, coming here in Central America, I found a very different system than in the U.S., in which sense? Well, first of all, it's been estimated by intelligent people that maybe half the people in the prisons here are innocent. There's a tremendous corruption. Uh, the finger points at somebody, he, t he goes to jail. It's like that. You got money, send somebody to jail to take the blame for you. Or uh, the police sometimes arrest people just to uh, uh, get credit for having busted some gang members. Then they'll torture them and try to get a confession out of them. So, uh, and stay away from the real gang members because they're afraid of them. So the whole system down here is just, you know, they arrest somebody, they'll arrest everybody in the household, right? Yeah. It's like that. And there's no investigation, next to no investigation. They have to stay in jail for 
for uh, two years before they even come up to process to see if they're worth finding guilty or not. There doesn't seem to be any system of bail unless you're rich, you know. And uh, that's how it is here. And, and those people get thrown in there with uh, vicious murderers and everybody else in uh, two to three times overcrowded situations in places built crowded, built to be crowded, but two to three times overcrowded beyond that. And so the system here is, is, is quite, uh, uh, it's a form of torture in many ways. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I've been in this, coming to these systems now for about over a year and I've gone to, a, and we'll go back again to a, approximately eight prisons within Honduras itself. And I've been to some in other parts. Uh -huh. mm, I mean, even though it's obviously, how do you say, like a ridiculous situation in those prisons, uh, you're the one who is giving them hope, I guess. They are right? extremely grateful. It's not just hope. It's a visitor. Somebody yeah. come to talk to them. And I go around now with a uh, human rights worker who's been in the prisons here for for years, and he can actually help some of these guys with personal problems, with the yeah. law and things like that, with his human rights connection. So we're doing a tremendous service just beyond our exercise in meditation. But the exercise and the meditation are not just hope. They allow people to release the stress in a very stressed out situations. And how do you do that? Well, we, we do breathing, mm -hmm. breathing, stretching, and then we sit in meditation. And the meditation, really, they all just get right into it. I've kind of learned how to guide people into it. And after all the breathing and the stretching, slow motion like we do, you know, they just, almost all of them slip right into it and everybody has a good experience. <laughs> so we encourage them to do it regularly. We uh, give out some papers to guidelines. We come back again. After a few classes, they get a certificate of recognition, which means a lot to somebody in there that maybe never got anything in their life, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we're doing. We're not the only people in there. There's educators, there's people doing classes, workshops. Most of them are working with NGOs and financed. And uh, but but, but of what we're doing, one guy told me, you know, there's nobody comes and does what you're doing. Nobody. I guess that's a good sign, right? <laughs> it's a sign that we got to keep moving, and uh, I'm gradually orienting some volunteers and others that can carry on with the projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how does this collective briefing, this collective stretching session, like, how, what does this, what, what, is it, what is it doing, like, with the conscious mind of prisoners? Well, like, you know, first of all, when you, when you stand and you center in your own silence yeah? together... And you begin breathing, abdominal breathing, you know. S slow breathing and slow movements. Yeah. And then stretching that releases stress from the back, from the neck, from the shoulders, from the head. Opens the chest where people are holding all the bad emotions. Yeah. And uh, stretches every part of the body and tones uh, the main structures of the core of the body. And people feel great because inside there... They don't do much. Yeah. They can't. They're in a small space. And so there's exercises they can do right where they're standing. They don't have to have the gym or anything. So there's some of the young guys in there, they play a lot of football. But the rest of them don't do anything. So stress builds up. People are crowded together. People are sleeping like touching each other practically. It's, it's a very stressful thing. And you can imagine the, the conflicts that build up in that kind of environment and the the pain of being, uh, the shame of whatever they may have done or what, what they may not have done, the anger of being locked up and, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the feeling of abandonment. Maybe their family doesn't even contact because here the government has made it very difficult for the family to contact or to visit. They do, mm -hmm. but they made it difficult. A lot of permits and money and sometimes they send the prisoner the other They send them from the coast up here to Tegucigalpa because this is the big place. There's, I think, 7,000 men in a complex here together, different units all packed in. And then there's women and there's juveniles all in just uh, outside of Tegucigalpa over the hills in a valley called Tamara. Mm -hmm. There's almost 10,000 people there locked up. 
10,000. It's massive. Even mm. a big prison in the U.S. is usually maybe 1,000, 1,500. Man, oof. wait, so many questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe first, when you go there, I guess right it's now right now it's like uh, it's a good thing when you enter the prison because the people there are perceiving you as a good human being who tries to help right but still I guess there are a bunch of other people who don't perceive you as a as welcome right uh the different units are controlled by different uh bands mm -hmm. I don't know to say gangs or bands and uh Sometimes they don't want to see a stranger walking through their unit. He may be spying on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, they, they have drug rings inside and even arms, uh, which is always like mm -hmm. don't see, don't tell type of thing. But it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of, lot of shit goes on inside. And so uh, they don't want anybody prying around. But generally, they, they, uh, I find it comfortable to walk around inside the units. So like, you basically walk around everywhere, or is there one well, corner, for example, I, where you know, okay, you should go I try go not there. to go back into the housing units themselves too much, because it's all packed in, and many strange people everywhere watching mm -hmm. TV, playing cards. Many people doing work, you know, making hammocks, all kinds of things. So I like to wander around outside, but I try not to go in the, in the units much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And, oh. <laughs> man, like... When, oh, for real, like I, I, we didn't talk about this in general. Like, how did you get in touch with meditation at all, or or, or yoga? Well, I or began stretching? back in my early twenties with a great uh, meditation teacher, and I did a lot of volunteer work with that. And I later studied with other teachers. It's not so much a matter of study as uh, practicing, yeah. doing it. Uh, some uh, uh, contact by osmosis with some of the sages, mm -hmm. and occasional retreats which I'm overdue on, and uh, hmm. things like that, uh, you know, so I've been, I've been into it my whole life. So when you talk about retreats, uh, do you talk also about silence retreats and so on, or is it yeah, more like... Yeah, meditation's an inner search, you know, it's yeah. uh, connecting with the higher consciousness uh, by going deep within, beyond the level of the personality and the ego. What does it take to connect yourself with the higher consciousness? Uh, it, it takes a simple centering yourself, I do I do some breathing with them and and then uh we make some sound like ah e o just the vowels we listen to sound we feel sound inside the chest we breathe slow and then you center like that and sometimes you can use mantras but I don't use many mantras because they seem too eastern mm -hmm. but anyways you find some simple way to center you let go you take it as it comes And what most people don't know, you just let the thoughts come and go. You don't have to shut out the thoughts. Yeah. And in those places, it's where it's extremely noisy sometimes. You don't have to not hear the noises. Hmm. And I tell them, you know, if you want to do it every day, get up early when it's quiet. But it doesn't matter if there's noise, you can do it anyways. Hmm. So you think of the noise and the thoughts as like the birds and the, and the sounds of nature. And you just sit and be mindful in a non-attached uh, way. You sort of surrender to a process that gets you into a, a kind of a meditative flow. Yeah. So, um, okay, like for you, it's like the connection to the conscious, to your higher consciousness. But what, how does it work like in terms of collective consciousness? Like, so everybody's just doing the same. Everybody's just doing I, yeah. you. And well, so no, I mean, I'm just giving you a little silly example. Oh, of course, there, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do it together a little bit. We go in. I guide people into it, and that you know, when you're there guiding it, talking, you're used to doing it. You know, you yourself do meditation so you can help magnetize them into mm -hmm. it. You know, that that seems to be the key. And uh, I've I know in the South Florida area where I did a lot of volunteer work, there are other volunteers doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's quite a lot of volunteers around the U.S. doing similar things, perhaps under the banner of mindfulness or Buddhism or the Christian contemplative prayer or uh, or just yoga. There's different titles on things that have similar modalities, mm -hmm. and it's quite popular, as you know, in Europe and the U.S. and uh, first world countries. In third world countries... 
it's uh, just beginning. It's still, you know, sometimes people hear about these things and they say, oh, you know, what's that, you know? Uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 people don't know what the hell they're, what the hell we're doing, you know. But they like it when they do it, and they come. We had <laughs> about thirty guys in in different segments coming in like that, twenty, thirty, uh, in the educational section of the Tamara prison complex, and uh, these guys came in cold. They had the discipline that they were students, right, mm -hmm. in the educational classes. But uh, they came in cold to the class, and, uh, man, I got them all doing all of it. And they, they liked it, and they said, hey, we feel relaxed, you know, we feel good. So it's like, uh, it's pretty natural. These are natural things, you know. Hmm. Why do you get up in the morning and you, uh, you know, it's just, 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 you carry that a little further, and you have a, a qigong exercise, right? It, it's, it's, it's all very natural. Hmm. Um, but it's still like there is, I guess there's a difference if you do it alone for yourself or if you do it in a group. I guess if you do yeah. it in a group, it's like easier somehow, like smoother. Yeah, of course. That's why people go to groups and yeah. exercise classes and things and gyms. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's due to yeah. like in general, like how the human being is. Like yeah. we, we, we strive towards yeah, the sense like of belonging. We like to do things with a group. I mean, you don't play football by yourself, do you? You like nope. football? No, you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, certainly each person's doing their own movement, but it, it's, it's good to be in a group. And I encourage these guys to get together with their friends and do it. And and, uh, and I give, uh, I tell them, you can just do the exercises you like, but this is self-care. You bathe, you brush your teeth, you do all this every day. You got to stretch and breathe and do a little meditation every day. This is normal self-care. You watch what you eat, right? So this is part of it too. And uh, they understand that, and I think uh, I tell them just do what you like here. And I've got it on these papers I'm giving out. You like the exercises? Do that. You like a couple of the exercises? Just do those like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I give funny names to the exercises so they remember them because you know, they don't get a whole lot of classes. There's so many places we go. Well, for example, we got the uh, the bear hug, and we got the uh, uh, the caminata del borracho, the the drunk walk. The drunk we, walk. Do, we do stretching like this, and then we do with just the shoulders <laughs> like this, and, and they all I call this this is the caminata del borracho. They all laugh and have a good time, loosen up a little, and but I give names that help them remember the exercises. <laughs> see, and uh, rowing the boat we do, and so they can. I encourage them to just do some stretching every day even if it's most of the exercises they've already done when they were in school warming up for football or something yeah. so we just do it like that a little bit more slower motion it's nothing very radical i man i, I really appreciate the work that you do, that you that you're doing because in the end you're trying to or you're doing it actually you're lighting up this spark that everybody has inside and trying to make a fire out of yeah. it like to to yeah. to give life back more or less to contribute something in a positive sense yeah. to every human being and you're doing like in a yeah in in the words of selfless service right like you mentioned it yeah. uh do, does this country or in general in the states or whatever lack of selfless service eh. I notice a lot of church people go to these prisons. Yeah. So they do have a sense of uh, volunteering and getting together and social things, but it seems pretty much limited to uh, the relig religious field. Um, I've also noted some of the social causes here with the immigrants and different things. People get together and there's a sense of service and humanity in general, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, of doing s f service for people that you think of as pushed aside, you know. Yeah people, uh, women in shelters or uh, orphans or people in prisons, uh, I think uh, there should be more consciousness that, uh, you know, you can't uh, have a green forest unless all the trees are green, right? You got to water the whole forest. You can't just uh, treat some of the trees nice. You know what I mean? That's and a good I think one. Uh, that's, that's a, that kind of concept of a uh, in Nicaragua, they have a term called solidarity, mm -hmm. which came from the Sandinista Revolution. But it's solidarity, they still have that feeling there of uh, helping out each other, working together. They have cooperatives, things like that. 
and I, I always admired that about the, 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 the Nicar- my wife is from Nicaragua, so I have a, a special attachment there. But um, the Hondurans are, as you know, such beautiful, friendly people, and they're facing such severe problems of uh, extortions and assassinations by gangs yeah. in uh, all the com- poor communities and uh, a lack of uh, employment, very high birth rate, a lack of employment. Uh, the escape valve to the north, to the U.S., has gotten closed. and So these people here are p- facing real serious problems. And uh, I, w- I would like to do more classes for the public in general, not just the special populations, and I'm mm-hmm. hoping to do that. Yes. Why not? Never yeah. too late, right? Yeah, because because it helps individuals, and when a number of people practice regularly deep meditation, there is uh, uh, atmospheric influence mm-hmm. that is supportive to the life of everybody else, whether they know what's going on with it or not. It's not like uh, you have to get out and convince anybody anything. It's the people that do it, getting together and doing it deeply, are contributing uh, not just to their own life, but they're contributing something to the social consciousness. And I'm hoping also that in these special institutions I go to, also somehow there'll be something contributed on a deeper level. And uh, like that. And I think if people see... Uh, others practicing these disciplines and also it has an influence a lot of people just see it going on that makes an impact I taught a guy in uh, South Florida in one of the prisons he was very enthusiastic he'd go out on the yard at yard time and do yoga and things by himself and people look at him as kind of a little nutty and later on they started coming around and maybe joining him a few and then he sort of became a wise man. People come to him for advice on things. So he became kind of like a guru right there in, mm-hmm. in, a, in the prison. And uh, this man is a man who you look in his eyes, you see great tranquility. That's his first impression you get. And he is a man that told me once, he said, you know, I used to be a very violent person. <laughs> he got out of the military and he must have committed some kind of violence and got locked up. But there is a transformation, and it's helping other people, see? So just by something like this going on in a place like that makes an impact on a lot of people that you don't even know about. Is it like in your case, or yeah, what's your view, your personal view? So you give everybody a second chance, no matter how cruel his past actually yeah, was. I'm not, I'm not there to make a judgment like yeah. w- what their past or present. I never ask about th- what they may have done. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not there to say that uh, convicted uh, uh, killers should be let loose. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm just uh, there to offer the people that want to, to come to a group and do some of these practices. I don't care if they're there uh, for some terrible thing or some minor thing like some drugs, or if they're innocent, it's not my concern, you know? Yeah. And to me, I look upon them and all people, even the street sweeper, I greet the street sweepers. I look upon them all as brothers and sisters. That's just a feeling I have. I think that feeling came from all these years of meditation, (laughs) a feeling of empathy with humanity. And his tranquility and so on. Yeah, so I don't... uh, I, I'm not there as a, I'm not a judge or any kind of legal person to be there and make any kind of evaluations like that. <laughs> <laughs> But is it like this um, empathy and all the other values that you gained throughout this whole meditational process, are those the things that keep you still going? Be- I think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it. It, it, it uh, because so, so, sorry for interrupting. Because you're 73, you could be like easily like just. Doing something else, you know? Of course. I would love to go to Roatan or Omotepe and really explore the reefs, climb the volcano. I would love that. Those are the things I like. Yeah. But, you know, I'm inside the prison and it's packed, overcrowded prison, walking around and talking to people. And half the time I've just listened to them and let them talk. They need somebody to talk yeah. to, a visitor. And I just think to myself, you know, I'd rather be here than at Omotepe. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. 
That's a statement, though. I've huh. been to those places before. You yeah. come and you go, and it's, it's nice, but this uh, satisfies uh, my inner feeling. And if there's some uh, accumulation of fatigue because they're long days with the travel, they're 12-hour days for me. Mm -hmm. And for an older guy, that's a lot. And, and should I get fatigued? And, uh, you know, if I pick up any stress from being there, I do uh, my practice and meditation and, and you know, carry on. Hmm. Yeah. Man, yeah, you're a huge source of inspiration for me, for real. <laughs> like, no, just by telling your story, it's, like, amazing. Because I'm right now just thinking about, like, okay, what kind of selfless things did I do in my life, you know? Or, <laughs> or am I planning to do in my life? And when I'm honest... Not many things. Uh -huh. Of course, like I've been doing some things for some friends and so on, you know, yeah, or, to, yeah. or to just these random acts of kindness. Well, it is kind of selfless, but then again, like I said, I'd rather be there than any place else. It's uh, it's also selfish activity because I like what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 You're right, though. You're right. In fact, in fact, I pay for what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and in the past, that's what I've been doing. I it costs me money to do what I'm doing, and I don't mind that at all. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spend money to go to Omotepe, right? So I spend money to do what I'm doing. I also get some donations, which really is what helps keep us going. Yeah. Can anybody, like, wait, can everybody just donate a certain amount of money? Or is it like a certain institution that is donating? Well, I had a nonprofit in Florida, but it kind of sort of defunct now. It's basically... Uh, Uh, you know, I work with a, a human rights group, but uh, anybody wants to donate, I'm Huff Yoga mm -hmm. on uh, at, on Facebook, Facebook.com Huff Yoga. That's my name. Huff Yoga. H U F F Yoga. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> no, really. Uh, I I I really just feel a deep deep respect towards you, towards your personality. I mean, we do, I, we I was do, yeah. We do spend a little money, you know, just yeah. to add on to that. Uh, Like uh, I, I I buy uh, reading glasses. A lot of the older people in the prison, yeah. I sometimes give out magazines. People donate to me to give out. <laughs> I do a lot of that, books and stuff. And uh, they 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 look at me with eyes like that, and I, I say, "What's wrong?" And they say, "I can't read anymore." <laughs> and I reach into my bag and I try this number. They put it on. They, they look. Their eyes get big. You know, wow! I can read it. <laughs> so I I buy glasses cheap, and I you know I I give out stuff like that a lot, and and uh, so all of that adds a little cost. Sometimes I get a shirt or something. You can get inexpensive here in the shops you saw down there, and mm -hmm. you know I give out things like that. <laughs> yeah. And I I buy coffee for them after the class. Sometime coffee, by the way, you can get for like about. 20 cents for a cup, 15 cents for a cup, mm -hmm. 10 cents for a cup, something like that. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Pretty cheap, huh? But, uh, you know, I'll get that for the whole class and s stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no words, for real. Like, <laughs> respect. It's, it's great, yeah. I like to have a little session like that afterwards. We talk, and I talk to them. Me and my partner, can we can talk to him in private. I have a partner here in Tegucigalpa. Mm -hmm. When I go to the coast, I'm pretty much been on my own recently there, uh, the coastal institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, that's the, the Atlantic coast, the Caribbean coast. Mm -hmm. That's where San Pedro Sule is and a bunch of mm -hmm. cities. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. But uh, we, um, we spend a lot of time talking one-on-one -on -one with, informally with many people. And uh, helping with other problems, too, because my friend is uh, good at this sort of activity. Mm -hmm. Really good. Uniquely good. And they need a counselor, advisor. People can pull some strings that can go back and write a report and, and, and get it turned into the human rights department or whatever he does, you know. Yeah. And help, help get a lot of people out of a lot of problems. But w what kind of activities uh, does your partnering like offer or, or what does he actually do well what are, like what he, are the what are the, he's the uh, sections that he's really good at he, he's with the uh center for the prevention and re recovery from victims of torture and so he went in the other day and i think i mentioned uh, there were a couple of young guys there that went to the store and the police got them and said hey they put some drugs and arm weapons on them and arrested them for extortion mm-hmm And they took him in, and the young guy just was beat up a little bit, and he described in 
sad detail how the police tortured him mm-hmm. to try to get a confession. So they tortured confessions out of them. And they tell me the police get a big bonus when they arrest a gang member. Yeah. Hey, so, but uh, like I said, they don't want to go after the real gang members because they themselves live in that area and, and, and their families are in trouble, right? Yeah. Or they are. So, but anyways, um, uh, he uh, took down a whole bunch of notes and he brought in a... Uh, a legal person or a doctor, I think, from from his uh, ONG. And they interviewed the guy, and he's doing things to pull some strings here and there to get the guy's case attended to so that this kid and his friend don't rot in jail hmm. for the rest of their lives as, as gang extorters. Can you imagine that? Nope, to be honest. Like, <laughs> that is... You cannot imagine something like this. And then like maybe it. throw them in the unit where the gang members are. Hmm. <laughs> So in general... So there's a lot of things of all kinds of injustice in this, I hate to say it, in the, in the system here. But for you, for example, so you're facing all these negative things, yeah, like a bunch of negative kinda, things. It's kind of hard to hear sometimes. Yeah, of course. Like yeah. When you're telling me like this, I'm like, wow, fuck. Like, and but, how do you balance that? Well, for one thing, it, it, it gets it off their chest to talk about it. And secondly, if we can offer them any kind of help or encouragement, that means a lot. So you're uh, you're reaching a hand down and pulling them out of the hole a little bit. Yeah. So that's satisfying. You're not being pulled down into the hole with them. You're helping yeah. them out. <laughs> so it's, it's very satisfying, actually. <laughs> yeah. Man. And <laughs> last advice for everybody yeah. in terms of selfless action. Yeah, and then so that's that's what we're doing, and uh, right now we're uh, I give seminars to train volunteers in taking these uh, simple modalities to uh, in need populations, yeah. including the elderly, the people in wheelchair. I have a video on the YouTube of a wheelchair exercise, mm-hmm. and uh, a, a highly uh, highly. Uh, traumatized people like trafficked girls and all of these special groups, psychiatric, uh, and how to deal with them and how to teach them. And we give these seminars. I I give these seminars in five of these Central American countries now for people that want to use these modalities. Uh, Many psychologists come to the seminars. Yoga teachers come. uh, General public come. Human rights workers come and uh, they they learn all of this stuff because I have a lot of experience with from crazy young kids to elderly to very, very elderly to uh, disabled and to psychiatric (laughs) mental health cases. There are one unit up there. Just add another story. Yeah. One another story. Of course. (laughs) Uh, One unit up there is... uh, all these special cases mm-hmm. and my friend said uh, oh no no we don't i don't want to go to that one huh? i don't even want to go in there and uh he's kind of new you know and i said look i want you to organize me the classes in there we're going to give them in there mm-hmm. and uh he went in he found the inmate coordinator who arranged the classes and we went in and we did a class with the uh psychiatric people and those are the among my favorite they're not like Crazy people gonna jump on you? No, they were, it was the great classes, great class. And well, then, but in which sense, great? Like uh, oh, just they're a little bit like kids more. You know, yeah. you can get a little more fun with them. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just empathize with them. I did a lot of mental health classes in the in the uh, Miami jail system. Anyways, uh, then we went and we did a class with the uh, uh, trans transvestites, transsexuals. Okay, and. Uh, he wasn't sure about that either, but we had a great class with them. Fantastic. And uh, then we did a third class in that unit for the um, disabled. They weren't severely disabled, but they were disabled in one way or another, psychologically or physically. Mm-hmm. And it was just all great classes. And we can go back next week. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there, there, nobody should be thought of as just... Uh, throw away. This is my motto. There's no throwaway people. And uh, there was a Swiss woman on the coast who started doing yoga in the prisons here named Koni Lustenberger. And her motto was, we don't exclude anybody. She'd go in, she'd say, we don't exclude anybody. 
We went to one place on the coast. I can tell you another little story. We went <laughs> one place, <laughs> and uh, we walked by a window, and there were these bars, and there were these young guys gl- gl- glowering at us with these grim looks. And and uh, one officer was walking with us, and wherever we were going, and and Coney said, "Who are they?" And he he said, "Oh, those are those are gang members, you know, of the Mara 13 and yeah. 18." And he said, uh, "Yeah, they're 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 in a special lockup section. They cannot be mixed with other inmates at at all. And uh, we don't we don't go in there to programs." And she said, oh, "We don't exclude anybody." And in, in her Swiss accent, you know, you can probably imitate it. Uh, I don't know. How would you say it in an Austrian accent? <laughs> Man, I, I well, anyway, <laughs> she would say that. She said like that, and uh, and you know, the Swiss are very, yeah. And uh, they said, oh, okay, well, we'll bring them out onto the field. You know, we can take them out onto the field. So they brought them out onto the field later, we're under heavy armed guard. <laughs> so they were all sitting under the tree with their machine guns, watching the class, and we did it in the full sun. You may think that's terrible sitting for meditation out in the sun on the middle of a yard. But they get out of, outside so little, that was that that too was like a b- blessing for them. And they they were very disciplined, did good with all the exercise and, and the and the Bruce Lee movement and the and the yoga movements and everything and then they sat in meditation like like Buddhas, like like statues meditating, you know? And I remember one guy afterwards who I figured maybe was their leader. He said, uh, you know, I, I'd like to do this every day. Can you give me a little advice on that? Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, man. And, and, uh, and <laughs> we gave him a little advice and some papers. And yeah. <laughs> and, and then when later, the next day, we walked by that window where the bars were. And they all waving at us like this. <laughs> My kids. Yeah, man, my heart goes out for them because these guys, you know, these guys got long sentences, extortion and killings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear these gang members have to kill somebody just to get initiated into the gang. And so they put them away. And I hear they got shifted to some maximum security way out in somewhere. So my heart really goes out to the guys. Uh, but... You know, I'm a teacher. I'm used to these kids, but uh, at least wherever they go, maybe that made a good a good shift in their life or awakened something for them. You know, and I I do understand that a lot of those people. It's not like they're just born little devils. They're in communities where they may come to your house and say, "Look, uh, we need your daughter, or your son," and. If they don't come with us, uh, you you uh, older folks may just have an accident. Mm-hmm. So what are you gonna they're, do? They're 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 forced into these things. Hard to believe, though, right? It's going on all over these countries, and that my, one of my goals is to do what I can to eliminate it from the realm of consciousness, at least. And you're I, doing definitely. I think in El Salvador they're doing a big political thing under Bukele now to try to control this situation. And I think uh, one thing the the gang member said was, "This is great so long as you find some way that we can make a living <laughs> <laughs> without doing all of this." Yeah, so, but in the end, that's all about right. Sorry for interrupting, man. Yeah. But uh, they're forced into this certain situations yes. in the end because of money because they try to survive yeah. like because or because anybody yeah. else is trying to survive yeah and these uh the uh, refugees going in the caravan to the US are forced into that yeah. out of fear for their life and desperation for income so it's not like they're trying to invade the US like like the Trump says it's their they're literally Nothing's as bad as staying where they are. <laughs> I guess that's really th- this understanding that you have towards these uh, people. This is this is like the thing that everybody should have. Like really, just imagine you growing up. You, I mean, you're getting shaped by your parents, by your surroundings, by your environment. And if your environment is 99% like vicious, negative, and so on, you're more likely to be like that. There's another problem here: is uh, the machismo. Yeah. 
You know, I've been told a large percentage of the prisoners in there are in for uh, sexual violations, mm -hmm. very often within the family. So this machismo is another problem here, you know. Uh, to use the vernacular, the, the fucking forget mm -hmm. approach, you know. How do so, you mean? Uh, you know, not, not, not committed uh, sex or reproduction, but, uh, uh, you know, we're guys, so what? You know, that sort of attitude. And, uh, and uh, they, they also have contributed heavily to the misery here. The misery, the too many births, the, uh, the births and uh, the mothers with no man around, no father. Hmm. Yeah, or the women getting beaten. Yeah, so they need a campaign like they're doing in Guatemala. They got a group to uh, the new man. Mm -hmm. What is, what is it all the about? Man, uh, uh, freed of machismo, of hmm. the, the patriarchic sense of domination and and uh, living by impulse and domination. <laughs> I mean, I guess you just have to highlight the fact that machismo in general is just a primitive yeah. attitude. But it's, you know, it's well known as a problem in Mexico, Central America. Of course, of course. Yeah. And it's not different like in certain European countries, uh -huh. uh, I would say, and in Asian and in Arabic and in yeah. African, like you have it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know? Arabic countries. But, yeah, you have it. The whole, uh, the whole religions of uh, the Catholicism and the Muslim are, are based on patriarchy. <laughs> Yeah. That's a huge topic to open. You want to open it? Of, no, I don't want to get into that now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not really it's my field. My yeah. field is uh, teaching. And uh, just to mention, you know, that we also go to the women's prison here. Yeah. But the uh, women's prison is only maybe a, a tenth of the number or a fifteenth of the number of the men. Mm -hmm. So we spend more time in the men's prison. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Man. I, I just wanted to say, like, I don't know, 50 minutes before, I, I really feel deep, deep respect towards you. That And just, like, feeling, I don't know, like, I, I wasn't able to formulate questions properly, to be honest. Because on the one hand, like, you're, you have this aura, this specific energy, like, of tranquility. And yet you're pretty chilled. And on the other hand, you're so powerful that you're just, like, immediately, automatically, like, just feeling, like, this deep respect. Like, not in a negative way. Like, really. Great I, source of inspiration. Like, I, did, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> whatever. I, yeah, j j now you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, um, I guess we came to an end. Maybe one last question because I'm really curious about yeah. it. Like, what does education in general to you mean? Uh, education is for practical purposes as well as for maturing, growing up. And it should also involve some way of developing consciousness and self-care and and good social values and social service should also be part of education. And I think they are being integrated, integrated a lot in education around the world. I saw a video the other day from Japan where the Japanese kids, they, they got to clean up their own mess. They got to eat everything they take. Mm -hmm. They got to, I think they do everything, all the, all the jobs. Now, maybe that takes jobs away from people, but it sure is good for the kids, right? Of course. Yeah. Here, man... The U.S. <laughs> so, I used I used to be a a, a teacher and, and and you know in the U.S. they have the a, a law you got to give a fruit each day to these kids and a vegetable and uh, these kids these uh, kindergartners would just throw it all in the trash every time <laughs> doesn't matter what it is it's fruit or vet and uh, so I used to go from table to table. And it just blew away all the other teachers. And I'd look at the table and I'd say, I'd say sometimes in Spanish, if they were Latino kids, mm -hmm. I'd say, who are the little rabbits here? Who are the little rabbits? And some, some kid would pick up his carrot and he'd go, and I'd say, there's a little rabbit. <laughs> there, there's one. And then another one would join in. One of you, there, there. And before you know it, they'd all be eating their carrots. And if it was fruit, I'd say, who are the little monkeys here? And they'd all start eating their fruit. And then you go to the next table. That was such a gas. You just have to meet them on the same level. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing with what I do in these institutions. You you don't go in as a, a, some superior thing or you got some doctrine that you want them to uh, take, you know. No. Meet them on a, just a human level. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Lawrence Huff, <laughs> yoga.
Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I can't wait like to continue this conversation afterwards. Well, I'm glad like... to have a chance to talk. You know, I, sometimes I don't talk about all these things either. So, yeah, that's very nice. Man. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, really. All right.